Hey, y'all. Welcome to Midweek Minis, the show where you get to ask us questions and we tell you personal stories because we have them again, don't we, Leah? Yay! How exciting. I'm Mitch Lawrence, and that's my wife, Leah Lawrence. Hey, y'all. And we are super excited. Like I said, we have some personal stories and we got some more questions that'll last us about a week and a half. So yeah, super thankful for everybody that sent us something. And uh, so we don't run out next time. How about y'all uh, yeah. send us some more stuff? It would be super <laughs> awesome. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. I just want to say up front here, I'm a little sick and stuffy and coffee. So if uh, I'm loud, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to your ear balls. That I might cough into them. Indeed. Oh, but uh, Leah, do we have a personal story that you yeah, want to hit us with? I sure do. Okay, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> and I don't think I've read this one yet, so we're all going to be surprised to well, get you there. Have. Oh, you haven't read through it, you no. mean? No. Oh, well, here we go. Exciting, right? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> this one is from Dalton, um, and it is from October the 29th, so I don't know if that has anything to do with what's going on, but it's pre-Halloween. Yeah. Uh, he email. sent in a while ago, but yeah. we recorded a few episodes, so. Because of us being gone on vacation. So right. Anyway, here we go. It says, hey, y'all. Uh, got somewhat of a strange thing that happened to me over the weekend. So I was driving on the road in my town on the west side, and I came upon a car accident that was the opposite side of the road from where I was driving. Me being the cautious yet curious human being that I am, I wanted to see the wreck and what had happened. There was a tow truck pulling a car out of the ditch. The family of the car was standing on the side of the road watching their car get pulled onto the tow truck. As I looked closer, the car and family was somewhat identical to this friend that I work with. It all happened so fast that I didn't pull over to check and see if it was her and her kids. I know I'm an ass for not stopping. Oh, God. Uh, so, uh, my friend was out of the office yesterday, Monday, and I never thought anything of it. She came back to work today, Tuesday. Uh, and was talking to another friend that works next to me. She told the girl that she was in a bad car wreck over the weekend and her car was totaled. Mm. I quickly turned around and told her that I thought I saw her standing by the road wa and uh, watching her crash car on Sunday. She said that she did get in a car wreck, but it was on Saturday, uh, just the day before. I was driving on the west side of town, or, yeah, and her wreck was on the east side of town uh, towards the beaches. Just thought this was a strange coincidence that a car accident I saw resembled my friend. Just mm -hmm. turned out that she was in a car accident just the day before on the other side of town. What are your thoughts on this? It's spooky season. Love y'all, Dalton. <laughs> it's spooky season. That's my thoughts. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. What are we What are we supposed to think about that? That's a little weird. It is weird, but I think it's more of a our brains fond patterns with things yeah. it, like if your friend hadn't have um, been in a car wreck you your brain would have never um, actually assigned meaning to that but mm -hmm. you remember the detail because something weird happened it's right. like um, I don't know your your brain is biased basically to finding patterns and that's a survival instinct of human beings to mm -hmm. keep things going you know um, so do I think it was spooky uh, probably not, but is it weird? Yeah. A little. I think that it's a lot like kind of what you're getting at is he saw someone that he thought might be his coworker. So when he asked her about it the next day or the next week and found out that it was her, not, not her there, but like, you know, like you were saying, seeing connections, it's like when you see a word that you haven't seen for a very long time and then you start seeing it everywhere. Yeah. It's like, uh. Like the word uh, hyperbole recently came up in something that I was reading, and now I've seen it. Like, now I acknowledge that I've seen it fucking everywhere. You know, I've seen it in like 15 times in the past three days somewhere. Someone saying hyperbole on Facebook, or someone putting the word hyperbole in a, a article, just because I hadn't seen or heard the word hyperbole in a really long time, and now I feel like my coworker had a car accident. You know <laughs> what? <laughs> I kind of followed you, and then I was confused. Yeah, I, I saw in your eyes that you just kind of glazed over, like the third time I said hyperbole, and that you just weren't paying attention anymore. <laughs> so I thought I'd bring it back, okay. and it worked. <laughs> All right, sure. Yeah, I'm sure this will make more sense after I listen it to it back. But no, anyway. it's not going to. Anyway, but yeah, I mean, it's a really spooky, like, especially around Halloween, if something had happened to me like that, I would have been like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, do I think it was a coincidence? Probably. Yeah. 
but not to um not to discredit your experience definitely not but also like i can't tell you how many times um people have have said oh i thought i saw mitch somewhere whatever no dude you saw like a man that was about mitch's height and build that is you know got a beard like a lot of bald white men with beards look exactly like mitchell um like from a distance through a window you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. Uh, so our friends were like, what color car does Mitch drive? Cause I'm pretty sure I just saw him driving down the street. I was like, no, I promise you it's not him. He's sitting right here. Yeah. Like, no, I just have an evil twin. It's like, have you ever <laughs> seen that movie? Um, uh, fuck the prestige. I couldn't think of it for a second. Christian Bale is a twin spoiler. If you haven't seen it, I'm sorry, everyone. Christian Bale is actually two Christian Bales mm. and that's how they do their famous trick. Um, that's what I have. We do a magic trick. You know, in those days when I'm just a real dick. Yes. Yeah, that's not me. It's my twin. <laughs> oh, good to know. It's I don't. That twin isn't actually in love with you. He has Bizarro Mitch is an else. asshole. Right. He has yeah. someone else. Cool. On the side, and we just do it to keep up appearances. All right. Cool. You see? Good to know. And to know what the other. You know, we have to. Anyway. <laughs> All right. First question that we have, and this is something I'm going to try the second we stop doing this because I'm very sick. Okay. From Yotam. What is the best sick day bourbon and why is it Jack Daniels Fire? Um, probably because the cinnamon will clean you right the fuck out. Like in your head, I mean, in your sinuses. And uh, whiskey's just good to make you forget shit. As I say, uh, like a hot toddy made with any kind of like strong whiskey of any sort just as mm-hmm. nice but i can ima- i haven't tried it with the the cinnamon but i think that oh, would yeah. be really nice yeah i'm probably gonna have like a sip of jack daniel's fire and then chase it with some nyquil and go right to bed that's just putting alcohol on top of alcohol yeah actually i'm on amoxicillin so i'm not gonna have any alcohol so no it's i'll a just have idea. a little bit of nyquil before i go to bed but later <laughs> when yeah. you're off of the amoxicillin yeah i have uh, so Y'all may know, if you've been listening, you may not, but we just went to Washington, D.C. We got back on the 10th of November, and Leah immediately left to go to Orlando, and then she got back on Friday the 15th. And that day, well, about Thursday, I started feeling kind of iffy, like my throat was a little scratchy, and it took until this morning, today, it's Monday uh, the, the 18th right now when we're recording, when I realized that the left side of my face has been aching for like a week, like since we got back from DC, I think I caught something like on the plane or something, but it wasn't bad enough for me to notice. It was just when I would chew the left side of my mouth kind of hurt. And I was like, maybe I'm having a tooth problem. It'll go away. And it hadn't. And then this morning it hurt a lot worse. And I realized that it's the whole left side of my face, like up to my ear canal. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I have an ear infection and I have for a while. So now I'm taking antibiotics, and I won't be drinking uh, on this week's episode, most likely. Sorry so, about it. You know, but we could do that. You know, I think a year ago we reviewed uh, NyQuil. I think we should do that again. Did we? <laughs> yeah, we did. You don't remember that? I don't remember that. <laughs> we did Shots in the Dark of NyQuil. You don't remember I, that? I don't. Are you sure? <laughs> I swear to God. What episode? Because it was the Kroger brand, because it was from Cincinnati. It was around Christmas, because we were both sick at Christmas. That's really funny, and I could be down for that. <laughs> you really don't. You really don't remember that? <laughs> no. Oh man, I, that was really interesting. I'll have to show you that because we did it. Okay. Yeah. I believe you. I just don't remember it. Y'all, somebody go back and tell us when that was. <laughs> uh, all right. Next question from Caitlin, who we hung out with in Washington. We by did. The way. Hey, girl. Hey. She showed up, and we had a great time. We were at um, a fabulous gay bar. Uh, well, gay brewery. <laughs> gay brewery. There you it go. It was super cool. Um, yes. I've the, already forgotten the name of the it. The Bear. Big Bear. Big Bear. Something yeah. like that. Big Red Bear. Bear? Red, Red Bear. Red Bear. Red Bear Brewery. It was Red Bear Brewery. And it was, it, the beer was fabulous. The food was so good. <laughs> um, yeah, highly recommend it if yep. you're in the D.C. area. I had a good time. Now, Leah, I don't know what this means, so I want you to take control. Uh, gargoyles or street sharks or neither? Are you serious? You don't know what that means? No. I don't oh, know God. Means. Your childhood was sad. It was. That's why I'm the adult I am now, Leah. <sighs> um, Gargoyles and Street Sharks were both uh, TV shows. They're animated kid shows. Okay. Um, I pick Gargoyles because it is by far the superior product. Um, <laughs> the storyline is way cooler. Um, 
fucking love it. It was so good. It was mm-hmm. dramatic. I had a weird like sexual awakening. Jesus Christ! Over the main character, he's fucking very a. hot. Did you, did you flick the bean to a gargoyle? I don't think so. It's a bit young for that, but like. Oh. He he was one of my first animated crushes for sure. <laughs> I had Babs Bunny. Um, <laughs> I was super into Babs Bunny. Um, but Gargoyles is actually now on Disney Plus. So if anyone wants to go back and Leah, watch it, Leah, please God, if I walk into the bedroom and you are masturbating to Gargoyles, <laughs> we are getting divorced. I swear to Christ, <laughs> we are getting divorced. I promise you, you don't have to worry. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Street think, Sharks was just lame. My I don't brother, trust that promise. My at brother all. had a, a Street Sharks um, action figure when I was a kid, and I always thought it just looks fucking dumb. Like it, <laughs> it was not, wasn't a thing. Um, anyway, Gargoyles, one hundred percent Gargoyles. Go watch it now on Disney Plus because it's no, wonderful. I'm taking Disney Plus off of every TV in this house. Why you are not watching Gargoyles? Why? Because it makes me feel sexually inadequate. Well, yeah, I mean. Have you seen? Uh, obviously, you haven't <laughs> have seen, you seen that gargoyle dick, boy. You, you can't don't see his up. dick, but he does wear a loincloth. <laughs> so that's what it was. You were into gargoyle thighs. I mean, maybe. Okay. Well, fucking a. I my answer to that, Caitlin, is neither because I've I do not. Um, here, no, these are about. the gargoyles. Are you going to show me the I'm gargoyle the picture? And the girl gargoyle was kind of hot too. Here. Hmm. Okay. Oh, hell yeah. I would masturbate to this. <laughs> you know what? Gargoyles is staying on the TV. Right. Disney Plus nice. is. All right. From Pip. Uh, Leah, you answer this real quick while I think about it. What's a movie slash book slash album slash song you hate by an artist you love? From Pip. Um, that I hate from an artist that I love. Yeah. Ooh. Can it be a product I hate? Yeah, by, go ahead. By not necessarily an artist, but like, like a rendition? Go ahead. Okay, well, uh, I'll probably think of something else, but first, because Pip, we've talked about this before with you, or at you, I'm not sure. Um, The movie Big Fish is excellent. The book is fucking garbage. I hate the book Big Fish. Um, And it has nothing to do with the artist, but I saw the movie first because it was filmed in my hometown, and it was a big deal, and I fucking love the movie, and it has nothing to do with it being in my hometown. I just think it's a great movie. It's a Tim Burton movie. And then I read the book many years later, and it's it's garbage. It's not near as good as the movie, but I'll think of something else, I'm sure. Uh, Leah, what do you have? Okay, so I like indie rock sad music. I mean, everybody knows that, Um, but uh, I... I... I like the Shins a lot, and I like the old Shins, and I like the newest Shins album that came out. But the one previous to that, I just hate, and I don't know why. I couldn't get into it. It's called Port of Morrow. Um, I had to look up the title. I dislike it so much. I mean, I own a CD of it, but I really just couldn't get into it, don't like it. Um, everything else that they did, super fan. But that one, I just do not like that album. It's kind of synthy, and I don't like that. I mean, but they do synthy stuff, but it's, I don't know. Something about that particular album, I do not care for. And anytime it comes up in a shuffle, I'll fast or you know, like skip it, because yeah. you no hate thanks. it. thanks. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I really can't think of another one. I just that one always sticks out to me that the difference between those two was so such a big deal for me. It's one of the only instances where the movie is better than the book mm-hmm. in in my opinion. Uh, mm, uh yeah. What? Uh, the Benjamin Buttons is the same way actually. If you and really? it, that the is a The movie is better? The movie is much better. Okay. Benjamin Buttons was a short story. Benjamin uh, Buttons, one button, button. One button. Yeah. Um, it's a curious case, it, actually. Yes, very curious. Uh, but it's a short story, and the short story is not interesting to me at yeah. all. Because I, I saw the movie, and I was like, oh, that's got to be an interesting story or a book or something. So I looked it up, and I read the short story, and I was like, well, fuck, why did they make a movie out of that? <laughs> like, it was... It was kind of like, oh, okay. I've got and another I, one. I'll, Forrest Gump. This. Yeah, I was yeah, just about to say that. I knew you were going to um, because you've talked about it. I've never yeah. read that book, so I can't it tell you one way or the other. It is in fucking sane. <laughs> Y'all, I am, you're, you're going to think that I'm fucking with you. <laughs> Forrest Gump goes to space. <laughs> Forrest Gump, you know, when he like uh, does the shrimp boat thing with yeah. Lieutenant Dan? That's not in there. 
he finds Lieutenant Dan. Um, what's it called uh, when you're standing on the street? Uh, bus buskering. Busking. Busking for money on the street. Yeah. He finds Lieutenant Dan busking on the street for money with an ape that he stole from a movie that he was doing with Raquel Welch. Forrest Gump did. <laughs> That the book is insane, and did you know there's a sequel? No. There is another one that I didn't know about. I, the only reason I know about this is because I listened to the um, podcast called uh, Unspooled, where they are going down the uh, 2007 AFI Top 100 list, and they just roll a die and randomly talk about whatever movie that comes up, and Forrest Gump was the recent one. In the sequel, it gets even fucking crazier. He does weird ass shit, including at the end of the book talking about going to the Oscars for his first movie that was based on his life. Y'all, if you want to read Forrest Gump, better yet, listen to the audiobook because it is a it is a terrible accent that does the the audiobook reading. Because <laughs> um, that's how I did it. It's on Audible, Leah. Uh, like I bought it a year or two ago and listened Why to it. Why don't you return it? There's always free returns. Well, no I think it was free. Uh, anyway. I want you to listen to it. That's All right, why. Fun. It is it is a psycho fucking story. <laughs> Forrest Gump the movie. And the thing is, looking back on it now because Unspooled kind of helped me understand this. That movie's not that great either. But it's fucking awesome for what it was, but the movie also doesn't make like any goddamn sense. I but just like, like the, the movie. Book, so do I. But it's not what it should have been. Like Shawshank Redemption should have won the Oscar that year without a doubt. Oh yeah, that's a much better movie like just Oh yeah. But, just cinematically in general that's a much better movie but, but that mo- that year was was insane though that was like pulp fiction and all that was that year too yeah anyway y'all fucking uh, I, again we completely didn't answer the question <laughs> but if we're going to talk about something i love in relation to something i hate the forrest gump book is i don't even know that it's bad but it's fucking crazy <laughs> Okay, the big fish is just the movie's great. The book sucks. So anyway, let's do one more, Leah. Okay. All right. That was a success. Good job, Pip. Woo. Great question. If, like the Fugatis, you had to be a rainbow color, which rainbow color? Fugates, Fugates. by the way. I don't, know what it, I don't know what this means either. This is Pip. It's because you don't pay attention when I talk. Um, the few gates were the blue family from Kentucky. Oh, Tailgate Tales last year. Yeah, I was going to say, fuck you, I don't pay attention. <laughs> over a year ago, and I believe it's pronounced Fugatis. It's not. Um, I would totally pull an Ursula and go sort of like a <laughs> lavender, pale, purple situation. Um, I've, Excuse me. I've spray painted my, my body that color before, and it <laughs> just looks good on me. I like it. Lavender. My favorite color is blue, so I just stick with the blue. You just stay blue? Yeah. I'm blue, da ba I don't. I shouldn't do that. No, that's terrible. Let's do another one while we have time. I don't want to run out of questions though, but you know, we'll do it. Uh, from Pip again. What's something you think, but absolutely nobody agrees, Leah? Oh. Yeah, um, I don't know. Should we? Should we do this one another time? <laughs> that high pitched noise I thought was coming from outside. No, that was a me. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm sure there's something. I'm yeah. opinionated as fuck. Yeah. Me too. Let's do this one another time. And we'll save it. Okay? It's back okay. in the bag already. Like I've lost all right, it. It's all right, gone. Cool. Cool. <laughs> all right. Also from Pip. Oh, this is perfect. This is what I wanted to answer. What's an album with no skippable songs? Leah. Oh, um, uh come back to me okay i have two uh number one and my favorite album ever because it was the first like a musical awakening album for me is busted stuff by the dave matthews band absolutely no skippable songs on it period a couple that i'm like uh, i could do without them but i'm not gonna that skip is them. a skippable song i'm not gonna skip them though i'm not going to do it um the second one is one i discovered recently and that's within like the last year um the band Guster has a live acoustic album from like 2013 and I've listened to um, some of Guster's studio stuff as well. And that live acoustic album, you, you cannot find a song that's not enjoyable. It's like, I think it's 14 or 15 songs, but uh, seek that one out on any of your streaming services. It's a, 
a, a green album cover with like a really poorly drawn cat, you know, on it. This is the album cover. Anyway, best fucking acoustic album, period. I love that album, and it has great versions of songs on it. Because every song on there I've heard in the studio version, uh, that live album is far superior to anything. I do love a good live album. Anything off of that is way superior to the uh, studio recording. Guster, live acoustic. Go ahead, Leah. <laughs> um. Okay, you're very passionate about that album. I know I am. because you play it all the time. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I really like it too, so I'm not complaining. Best but... version of the song <laughs> Diane there is. It is period. really good. But um, anyway, uh, I would pick uh probably the Decemberist because you know I, I love them. I have a problem. Um, anyway, mm-hmm. uh, but the Hazards of Love is uh from 2009, I think. So. Um, I first started listening to them around that time um, just because it's college and you've got to start your weird indie music somewhere. But anyway, Mm -hmm. um, The Hazards of Love actually is literally you can't skip one of the songs because it the whole album is sort of like an operetta um, and it tells a story. And if you skip one of the Oh, the, so you literally can't skip yeah, it. Yeah, you literally can't skip it and get the whole story. Um, I mean, you can physically skip like the CD or whatever, but um, if you want the whole story, you can't skip one. So that's going to be my uh, my answer because, you know, I liked that album a lot. That's a good one. I mean, I don't know. I've never actually heard it. But I'm gonna you, say you've heard one. songs, but you haven't heard it all together. Can I say a half of an album that's Go unskippable? <laughs> um Pearl Jam's first album, 10, if you listen to like the first six songs on that, absolutely unskippable every track. And then uh, the last half of the album, I think, is just not good. But half of it, I'm going to listen to all of it. <laughs> so you're going to listen to half of it? Yeah, that's the album with Even Flo and Jeremy and um, Alive on it. Oh my God, it's just like, it was their best, without a doubt. But it was the first one they did. And they've had other great stuff too, but you know. Oh, I just want to talk about that live acoustic Guster album for us. <laughs> no, right? you do. Best version of Diane. You've said that already. Hang On. <laughs> There's a song on there called Hang On and Satellite. Satellite's probably their most favorite, most famous song. Um, but that's the best version of Satellite there is. Oh, God, it's just so good. I just uh, Everybody go listen to that Guster album and get back to me. Live acoustic. Green album cover. Cat on the front. Trust me. Seek it out. You will not be disappointed. Cool. Uh, Leah, do you have a nice recommendation like that, like I just gave? Um, <laughs> I mean, if we're going to talk about one of my favorite albums, I really like, uh, once again, I'm obsessed with December, so I will always recommend them. But their live album also called We All Raise Our Voices to the Air um, is absolutely magnificent i does it have skippable songs no okay no it doesn't um (laughs) not for me because like i said i I love their their stuff but um they are a fabulous band to go see live uh i like their studio music but you're right like there's something about seeing them live and Mm -hmm. then listening to that live album it it sort of puts you back in you know well i just think that certain bands do much better live like Guster is much better live than on the album. The thing is, as we all know, my favorite band, Dave Matthews Band, is re- Sam. Shut up! I'm I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dog. <laughs> the Dave Matthews Band is referred to as the best live band ever, or whatever. Disagree. They do great live. They they are amazing live. But personally, like I've been to shows. I've been to one show, and it was awesome. But what I believe is that they are just as good live as they are on the album, which is such a big deal for a lot of people. Um, I just can't tell the difference between their songs. Yeah, a lot of I get I that. I literally cannot tell the difference between one song or another. Because you're a racist. I, I'm, it's not. I mean, I'm a racist <laughs> against dude bros, I guess. But y'all, I can't tell the difference at all. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sure you probably think the same thing about some of the stuff that I listen to, but at least like there's oh, vocabulary yeah. words there that you got to like invest uh-huh. in. For uh, that, it's just a bunch of jangly, clangly. It is. It's mostly guitar, jangly, clangly. And but I don't what I was get saying it. was <laughs> that uh, Dave Matthews Band Live is great 
like Guster is live, but the the differences in the live performances against the album, you know, uh, what am I trying to say? I have no idea. Against the album, like Guster is much better live than they are on the album. Dave Matthews Band is pretty similar to me. The studio stuff and the live stuff is, I like it all. Guster, I pretty much steer away from the uh, studio. You know who was really weirdly as good as their CD? Um, my brother took me to see Neutral Milk Hotel mm-hmm. um, uh, when they did their tour. Like they hadn't toured in a decade and they came to Birmingham. So my brother took me and they did uh, in an airplane over the sea front to back. Also a fabulous album. Ooh. Probably not for everybody because it <laughs> is weird as fuck. And there's a lot of strange like there's a guy playing a saw on mm-hmm. it. Like it's weird. Um but they played that entire album and I was expecting it to be like just, you know, people playing without all of like these studio sound effects that I assumed is what was in it. No, bitch. These people played it <laughs> note for note exactly like the album mm-hmm. with the like there was a guy playing a saw on stage just sitting there bending his musical saw. And I was mm-hmm. absolutely fucking literally blown away. Like Hipster Jesus pulled it out. It oh, was really God. good. I hate um, when Hipster Jesus pulls it out. <laughs> It was, he was, that's what the lead singer looks like. He, he mm-hmm. looks like fucking hipster Jesus, but, um, it was wonderful. Um, I was very impressed. Well, I'm so happy for you. I like neutral milk hotel, but I haven't listened to a lot of it. So I, I mean, Everything if I've you, listened to there's a like. lot of weird dissonant, screamy kind of stuff going on in that album. And I yeah. particularly enjoy it, but, um, and I used to <laughs> fun story. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> used to masturbate. While listening to that to Gargoyles. No, no, and no. Mm. Um, but speaking of weird sexual activities, I used to live in an apartment uh, Jesus. In, in college, and like my senior year, and there was uh, a girl that lived on in the next apartment, and her bedroom and the bed you know, was up against the room that I had my TV in. And I would just be sitting there listening to the TV. And all of a sudden, you'd hear this bed smacking and smacking. And she's screaming and putting loud noise on, like just playing loud music as loud as possible just to be irritating. I I guess to cover up the sex sounds. Like, I don't mind the sex sounds or whatever. But, like, Mm. just, like, keep it fucking calm eventually. But it got so bad that it was, like, Every day, every day. And I just got mad and I turned my uh, computer speakers towards the wall and pumped them as loud as possible. And I just played the most screechy, annoying track on that album as loud as possible for about 30 minutes. And she stopped fucking doing it after that. I think she moved the bed. It was awesome. Well, I was going to say, did you like scream over it too? No. Because that would have been fun. No, it's just this weird screechy, like dissonant musical saw sound i don't know how to (laughs) explain it but um yeah it was fun i think our dog was just making that noise a minute ago (laughs) yeah fucking cunt Uh, all right well anyway yeah well that's it for midweek minis this week it's been fun and we got to one question that i really wanted to talk about i'm so glad And we talked about it for way too long so so. if anybody else has questions feel free to send them into our email on any of our social medias um, send a smoke signal carrier pigeon. Yeah. However you feel, we that you might need not to get, get it those to last us. two, but most know, likely you can not. But you know, um, it, it w- a great way for you to get your question and or listener story in is to uh, put it on the back of a postcard and mail it to me. That would work too. Would it? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see <laughs> about that. All right, y'all. It's been fun. Join us this weekend for the main episode release, and then we'll have our next Tailgate Tales next week, not this week. It's the Iron Bowl, y'all. It is. It's the last one of the year because we're not going to do the playoffs again. That was too We're much. not? No. Good. We're not going to do all that crap. Fuck yeah. We're just going to do the Iron Bowl, and that's it. <sighs> so. so appreciate that. All right, y'all. Well, we will see you next time. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.